Jeremy S. Cook here, and today I'm building a Nixie tube clock from a kit. Nixie tube are unique display methods that use a number of cathodes in a glass filled tube to display characters. As seen here, they have a very unique look. The build started out by getting the kit from, from Tindy, and I opened, opened the little plastic wrap up, had the tubes in there, you can see one of them there. It looks, looks really cool, I was really excited to see how it worked. After that, it was time to put in the resistors. These were probably the easiest components to put in. You just bend them and put them in. They've all got color codes, which you can use to identify them, but the instructions also have an identification sheet later in the instructions. After that, I soldered it on with my TS-100 soldering iron, my, my trusty iron, and clipped it off with these little, little clippers. There we go, putting some more resistors in. There are quite a few to do. So it was just a matter of kind of not knocking the parts out. I was surprised I actually assembled everything correctly and it worked the, the first time. I guess part of that was just having a somewhat clean desk and a good, good area to work on. This one took a little bit of work to get in. I actually had to use pliers on the other side to, to pull it through. Obviously you don't want to pull too hard or you end up breaking the components. More soldering there, and I did quite a bit more because there were more more resistors than is shown here by, by a long shot. Overall, it was a pretty enjoyable build. It probably took me about four or five hours to, in total, but it was, like I said, enjoyable. Right now, right now, I'm putting the diodes on. These were slightly harder to put on because you had to get the positive and negative correct, and also they're very hard to read. I would definitely recommend using a magnifying glass to identify them, at, or at the very least, having a good lighting setup. At least I had that. After I got that capacitor in, I soldered that in. That one had to be directional as well, so I had to worry about the cathode and anode sides. And then it was time to unbox some more components. You can see some trans transistors here, including this one that I stuck in there. These things having the three leads, you have to separate them correctly and push them in, but not too far, just enough to get them tight, but not, not, too, not too much to, to break them. I didn't break any of them, which was good, but looks like if you shoved them all the way in, it, it would definitely, definitely do that. Soldered those into place as well. And more clipping. Actually it's starting to look like a real circuit board now. Then it was time for some more transistors. There were several different types in this, so I had to make sure I got those correct. Again, I was I was shocked that I got everything right the first time, but I guess I guess the directions were pretty good and I actually paid attention. There's a bigger MOSFET transformer, or transistor I should say. Took a tiny bit more work to solder in. Oh, and right here, here's the power connector. This actually had to be soldered from the top. It was inserted from the back, which you'll see in just a second where it resides. Yeah, you can see me working with it there. And then the little switches for setting the hour and different, different minutes and different settings on the clock. And after the battery, then, then that's the crystal oscillator. Push it down to there. I, According to the directions, it looked like it was soldered, but it actually worked okay, not soldered like it was, so that worked out okay. And these these connectors I had to put on the Nixie clock, Nixie tube itself, which is obviously the highlight of the clock. Really awesome, even when they're not on, so I was just super excited to see it actually in action. It took a little bit of work to get it all plugged in, because there's quite a few sockets that had to be aligned correctly. Soldered the first one, top, turned it over just to make sure it was in place correctly. And as it looked pretty good, I, I finished the build, or finished finished that one. There were still three more to go. And skipping ahead a little bit, here's number number three. I think number two was actually the hardest to put in, but with that and the other two two put in, or another other one put on, I soldered in the LEDs. It's kind of a strange connection method. It 
the LEDs actually had to go over the board and then connect again. You can see here bending it with my my clippers. Just had to be careful with that, but that worked out really well. Obviously, you got to pay attention to where the positive and negatives go with that, just like any other diode. And some little fluorescent tubes complete the, the, the dots in between the colon and between the hours and the minutes. Chips went in fine, but I had to, to bend the connectors just a little bit to get in, in there correctly. It wasn't easy to tell which way they went, but eventually I got them got them correct. In with the battery put in, and that battery plugged in, it worked really well. It could take between 9 to 12 volts, so this made a nice little bench setup. With that done, it was time to install this standoffs for the front and back protector, the, the clear plexiglass that protects it from the from the elements. I should note there's 180 volts used in this, so you definitely need to put it in a situation where it's not going to be, be touched. One way to do it would be to put it put it up high, which is what I did, or you could make your own case, I suppose. There I am, it's screwing in the protective plexiglass. And it still still works. Yay! With that done, I made sure the setting, settings worked okay. It's all outlined in the directions how to do everything, but that was not, not a problem. But one thing I wanted to do, I wanted to hang this on the wall in my shop, high enough that nobody's going to really mess with it or, again, get into that voltage. So I set it up on my, on my milling machine, use a center drill to, to drill that out nicely, center it, and then use the big enough, big enough drill that I could fit a, a Tapcon screw in between. So all I'd have to do is, is tack in, tap into the concrete then put it on there. Looks pretty good. And time to reinstall that piece. And then put the, the Tapcon screw in the wall. No problem there, and it fits correctly. With it hooked up, I then made sure that the wires were somewhat organized. Hooked to my conduit right there, and then put another screw in so I could actually tie it to there and just have it kind of, kind of out of the way. It's not the cleanest setup in the world you could do, but it's it's pretty good considering the effort I put into it and just kind of kind of puts the wires out of the way. So that's my final setup. You can see it leading down the conduit to the outlet. And that's it set up there. So that's the whole build thing, but I thought I'd, I'd include some more more shots of it in the dark, just, just panning around, because I just think it's really beautiful, especially when it changes numbers. I really enjoyed this build and I'm super happy with the results. So thanks thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, please leave a comment, give it a like, or even consider subscribing. Jeremy S. Cook, signing off.